Okay, can、uh, you hear me? Okay,、uh, if you can hear me all right, please tell me that you can hear me all right. Yes, all right. I'll switch camera to、uh, my camera. camera. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so、um, this is part two of my sketching thing, and I'll show you first what I did the last time. And I'm using here the, I don't know if you can see the logo, but MD paper, cotton paper sketchbook.、Uh, Which I got for testing from the MD paper people. You can see the name here MD Cotton. Yay. And it's a nice paper for sketching. So I wanted to do some、uh, pencil sketches of things. And、um, the first theme that I chose because of some. Uh, uh, Questions I got from Kana、uh, were like the Kanban, so like the signs for stores in Japan, like the old style Japanese stores. So I did some sketches already, and I will show you quickly what we have here.、Uh, so we have like the standard one with the legs here and the bar and the sign on a small roof. We have a, we have a vertical one here, we have a small lantern. And we have a bigger one here, which the sign is in a frame. We have a more modern one.、Uh, we have one like this. And we have a lantern, like a vertical sign. And、uh, a really simple modern one. So, more lanterns. Like this is the same one, but from another angle.、Uh, really simple one with double legs. So, we have the legs here, and it's like. Legs on legs with a small roof, roof、uh, lantern, and a vertical sign like here, a sign made of what was left probably from a sign that burned down, and a、um, uh, sign like this, and a sign like here, and one of my favorites,、uh, like the vertical one here. I like the vertical ones, and some additional ones that I did, like the vertical. A vertical one and a kind of roundish one. So I went、uh, through most of my、uh, photos that I had on my,、uh, in my library of, of stuff and looked for some more signs and some more like, elements that I could、uh, sketch. And actually, I found a lot of photos from、uh, Kawagoe, which is like、uh, the city. Uh, close to Tokyo, which has a lot of、um, old style shops and、uh, like a shopping street full of old time shops, like designs, and, and some, are, some are original and some are、uh, some are original and some are built recently but are following the style. So、uh, there are a lot of ni nice. Like signs and elements that I would like to sketch. Okay, so I will be sketching with this、um, Karandash、uh, mechanical pencil. It's 0.7. I explained about this in my latest video, so、uh, let's get on to it. If you have any problems with the stream, just let me know.、Uh, for example, I don't know, the sound is、um, low or whatever, so just let me know if anything happens. I, I can push the mic away from me or something. so... Okay, let's make the camera more like this. And let's zoom in a bit. Zoom. Okay. okay, so let's do the first one. And this is a hair salon、uh, sign. So it has、uh, this kind of weird pattern on it. And if you want to.、Um, If you want to ask some questions, I'm of course I'm drawing so I cannot answer all of them, but、uh, the ones that I、uh, that catch my eye, I'll try to answer. Okay, so here we have a sign that's in like this kind of curved shape at an angle.
and it has like a border and this is a hair salon sign so it has like these two poles on each side which have a I think a light bulb here which is really weird and it has this hair salon pattern of stripes blue and red that are not like going round and around here on this sign because this is just a, like a wooden sign but uh, a lot of hair salons ha have these in in Japan okay so uh, here is red and here is blue and I'll try to sketch it more a bit okay so here is like the pole on the other side and it has like a step here and a small thing here which is black almost and the light bulb which goes like this light bulb and it's kind of thick it's about this thick and this frame is also kind of thick so we get a shadow here and a shadow here now oh, by the way I will scan all these sketches when I have some free time probably today or tomorrow and uh, I'll make a PDF of uh, these files and I'll upload this PDF to my Patreon for all my Patreon supporters. So if you are a Patreon supporters with the tier to get like um, the monthly sketches and files that I upload, uh, you will get all these sketches in like high resolution PDF so uh, or zip file so you will be able to kind of browse them and, and see them. Okay. And you can see the top part here a bit. And here all are also the stripes. I don't know from what country this actually comes from, like this this rotating poles for the barber shops or like beauty salons, but uh, you can see them in uh, many places in Japan. Okay, so it ha it says here salon. And there's like a name of the of the hair salon here in kanji, so I'll just sketch it like roughly. Okay. And this is of course placed on a roof with tiles, so I'll just draw the angle so we know more or less how it's positioned. And here are the end pieces. Ah, you can see it. Okay. Yeah, I I have been using like all my pens and pencils like this. I've been like really smooth and re really slow with this. But um, recently, I um, kind of uh, consciously decided to change this because um, I saw that a lot of the artists that I like and follow uh, including like Hayao Miyazaki uh, use like their pencils holding really like uh, back uh, on the pencil and allowing for more kind of flowing uh, lines and more randomness also in, in the line which gives it 
it makes a, it makes the pencil a bit har harder to control, but also it makes it um, so you have to always kind of think what you're doing, and that's good because um, thinking what you're doing allows you to uh, produce more like con conscious works, works that you um, consciously try to control the line all the time, which is good, but also allows for this kind of roughness and flowing lines, which are better than stiff lines that uh, I tend to produce when I hold the pencil really closely. Okay, so here is the here is the sign and from what, what I can see from the photo it has like a bar here that holds it to the wall of the building. There is like the wall uh, and here is where the kind of um, roof ends with the tiles like here okay and it's attached here so it doesn't fall over i guess there's another one here but um we cannot see it okay so this one is done let's move to another one So zoomed in, I, I cannot see where is the end of the... Okay, okay let's search for another one. So I'll put it back while I search. Okay, I found a lot of interesting ones that I would like to sketch. Okay, so here's one that we found actually with Kana yesterday or the day before yesterday. Uh, and this is an empty space for a, a lantern. So... Basically, when this um, sh sh not sh sh no, it's a temple. Huh? Uh, when this temple is open, there is like a, uh, a big um, lantern, paper lantern here inside. But um, because we went there when the uh, temple was closed, it was empty. So uh, I can see how actually this thing looks. Um, without the lantern so it's easier to see how it's made and it's a nice one actually I don't know how we call it a stand uh, okay and it has a kind of roof thing going like here and this part is made of uh, made of metal, but we'll ma mark it later. And this also has like a small roof part, also made of metal, probably to shield the wooden parts from rain. This is like the bottom part. And we have a part here which goes in this nice curve. And there's a bar here. All the tools that I use are basically listed, um, and the tools that I recommend are basically listed on my website. And the ink that I use for most of my uh, drawing and painting is uh, made by a company called Sailor. And this is a ink, two inks actually. One is called Seiboku and the one is called Souboku. And um, there are blue-black inks. One is more brighter than the other. And both of them are based on pigment, not on uh, dyes. So uh, they are waterproof and they are waterproof. But um, they are not really recommended for like um, just putting in a fountain pen and leaving it there because if you don't use it don't use a waterproof ink like this um, you can get your pen clogged up with the dried ink and because it's waterproof it's harder to clean out than just regular fountain pen ink which can be a bother I use it because 
Uh, most of the time I use my fountain pens almost every day to draw lines for my um, Tokyo at night uh, illustrations right now so I can just use it every every day okay and it has bars here that go underneath this one Okay, like this and they go out from this side and this part here is a bit different goes like this this is more curved like this okay so the back part is here and here <laughs> uh, no it's not a problem it's just I um, made the website so it's easier for you to um, uh, just copy the name of the uh, of the tools that I use most are uh, Japanese or made in Japan so it's kind of hard to catch it from when I'm just speaking about it in my videos or something okay so here's the the back part which is this kind of cloud shaped part like this There is a track outside doing something. Gomi. And like, no. Zoom a bit. So there's like this part here. And there's another curve here. And there's like a smaller one here. So it looks like a small cloud. And um, there's like a pole that supports supports this everything, and it has a kind of cup end thing here. How do I toggle between drawing from imagination or from like reality? Um, it's difficult to, to switch, but uh, mostly when I use when I draw something from imagination, I use the parts that I learned about when I was drawing like this from from reality. Uh, even sometimes when I have like to draw something from imagination, I will look for some inspiration in real like photos uh, and other pictures or other sketches that I did so far um, to get some material for for the new thing that I have to do from imagination let's say so it's not um, like 100% from imagination but um, it's new enough that you can say that okay this is from uh, imagination there's no place exactly like this or there's nothing exactly like this thing in reality but um, a lot of elements are, are that I use are used from uh, things that I, I drew and I saw somewhere and I um, remembered so for example here also I'm doing these sketches also because I want to learn about how these things are actually made and later when I need to, for example, draw a shrine or a temple from memory or from imagination, I can base this uh, on my experience on drawing, like from photos, for example. So, okay, so this part here is metal. 
and this roof here is metal here and uh, we have also like this part here which is also like a metal metal thing probably made from um, copper and the pole here continues for a little bit and has a like this bar which also has this kind of cloud motif to it and goes like here and this part goes on the other side a bit so So for example when Kana asks me, okay, you know, um, for my next like eating animation loop I need a background of like a Japanese restaurant um, that has this kind of um, uh, feel of, 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 of being somewhere on a trip and um, I want to have a window with uh, something like visible like uh, outside maybe some trees or something and maybe we can see the sea or something like that i can um i don't have to like work from scratch i have some restaurants and some places similar to this one that i already um drew or that i just saw when i was somewhere or made a f made some photos from we can also go for some location hunting to look for places that are similar to um, the thing that Kana looks for. Okay. So here probably like in the middle. Probably here somewhere is like a hook that allows to um, mount the paper lantern. So then it goes like here in between this bottom part and this top part. There is a hook here in this kind of shape. So I think there's another one about here, there should be. So it goes like here in the middle. And you get a lot of artists that um, do this kind of thing. Uh, if you look at, for example, uh, artists that do like science fiction uh, concept art, they will use like futuristic looking buildings or like engine parts or like um, weird machines to for a base of their um, sketches and drawings. Yeah, what is cover? Okay, so um, next one. I'll just to look for something interesting in this thing. Uh, we have space here, so I look for something vertical. And uh, this is interesting, actually. Okay, let's do a nice one here. This one is weird. This one is probably a modern thing. has this roof which is like this shape and it has a bar here and like two holes and this part this whole part is made of metal so I think it's a new thing and it has a wooden bar here which is this kind of round type rounded type and it goes like all the way to the back and then it goes down something like this okay and we have this roof part going like here and it ends like here and this part is like a wing goes here and we have the end here 
with a bar probably similar like this one with the holes yeah i would like to mean uh, know what you mean by covering if you just want to like speak about my pictures then it's okay but if you want to use it for a cover of your video or something like that then uh, i'm sorry but no like things like can you use my things should be sent by email so i can review them okay and this uh, piece of wood goes like all around here and we have the shadow here okay and this part also is in shadow and these are black because it's just like holes in the metal part okay and we have some text like here there's some text but the most interesting part about this sign i think is a how do you call it a mame a bean with this bean shape bean thing and it has a sprout coming coming out from here with two leaves which is one of the cutest signs i have ever seen probably and this wooden part goes up to here and it also has this kind of cloud shape what like this maybe i'll zoom up a bit more okay and um the whole thing stand is hold down to the to the wall uh with these braces here there's one here going up to the wall there's a bean a bean Mm, mame. Oh, <laughs> and this also is um, one of the shops in Kawagoe. Uh, so um, if you don't know about Kawagoe, this is like a small town uh, near Tokyo that is famous from its uh, shopping street. And this shopping street has um, this old kind of uh, looking buildings in it. Almost every building in this shopping street is in this kind of um, tiled roof and old Japanese style. And um, even though some of the buildings burned down some time ago because of a huge like fire, um, the city kind of um, the city shop owners decided that um, they will um, renovate the old ones that survived and make um, any new shops uh, have to kind of comply with this uh, old style. Uh, of uh, architecture so you have a whole kind of uh, small city center and like a shopping street with only um, old style like Edo kind of period uh, um, shops mostly like wooden and um, from like built from stone uh, so it's really nice to go there and to do some photos for like reference if you want to see some like tradition traditional looking japanese stores it's a nice place uh, it's outside of tokyo so i didn't feature it in my like tokyo storyfronts book because it's not exactly to tokyo anymore but if you want to have a nice one day trip from tokyo to see some interesting buildings it's a nice place to go the only problem problem is that the main shopping street is actually full of cars because it's the, also the main street of the town. So um, it kind kind of can be a pain to go from one side of the street to another because there are all, there are always like cars streaming. So this part is in shadow 
Mame Shiba, it's not Mame Shiba. <laughs> but I know what you mean. Okay, so uh, the roof has uh, this. Um, it's on the corner of the roof, so it stands above this um, large roof tiles that has the um, logo or the like the seal of the family on here, and the traditional roof tile uh, start from about here. And here's another one with the big ones here some uh, roofs that are like more expensive have two of those huge tiles on the uh, at the end and you have the traditional roof tiles with this wavy shape continuing like from here and there's like a uh, how do you call it? I don't know in English, but it's like the inlet for the drainage pipe system here, which is also really nice because it has this bulge wave kind of pattern, which looks more or less like this. You have the drainage pipe here with the lip. And it's hold down with this kind of clasps here. And this part looks like this. It has this metal kind of pattern here. It has two bulges. And then it goes with this kind of square type pipe down. And this pipe again has this cloud shaped curves to it and it goes just like around the corner and the thing continues here also and it's held down here like this okay So something like this and I'll zoom out and there's another bar here that holds this to the wall that starts in the shadow so I'll paint it uh, draw it like this and then it goes from the shadow and to the wall and it drops a shadow like this and this one also drops a shadow like this. So something like this. This is a really interesting um, end of wall kind of end of roof kind of um, sign. I haven't seen anything with a bean in it before. So this is kind of interesting. And the sign drops a shadow here on the tiles. And also here. Okay. Okay, so we have a nice one. I'll search for something that I can fit here. It's a downspout. Okay. <laughs> Gutter. Oh. Downspout. That's a nice. I uh, know. Oh <laughs> downspout. Downspout. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> dance spot. <laughs> downspout. I thought this is very serious. なんかこのこの部分。そう。
okay so uh, next one uh, i don't know if i can fit it here so maybe uh, i'll search for a different one i i have a lot of um photos ready here okay let's make this one this is also a vertical one so Yeah, there are a lot of things that I don't know in Polish also, so we call them like widgets and gadgets and doodads and all kinds of things like this. Okay. This is a bit, er, bit, a bit less steep. Okay, like this. Or more steep, more steep. And this is a lantern that stands in front of a store. So it has these two bars here with a gap in the middle and it has two rows of tiles here which go like this and have like gap in, in between them so it makes this nice roofy kind of effect and um, you can see the this part here and the bottom part there's a shadow here and here And the bottom part looks more or less like this. And because it's really dark wood, it looks almost black. And this part goes up and we have a small like, cross pattern in the middle so something like this Okay, and this is supported on a base that starts with this a little bit bigger piece here. like this I guess and this goes down in a curve like this something up until here maybe a bit wider that's a good one an architecture student that knows um, all the parts of the building is a good thing. I tried to learn all the. I tried to learn all the parts of like Japanese storefront when I did uh, the um, Tokyo storefronts book uh, because I had to translate uh, the text to English also. Like I had to write it in English, so I had all these parts of um, buildings like the roof parts and the front parts of the front storefronts that I didn't had slightest idea how to call it in, in either Japanese or English and I had some problems. I looked a lot at like um, architecture books and um, just pictures and um, 
on the internet explaining what all the parts of the buildings are named but it's really hard to remember all these and probably I already forgot most of them <sighs> and okay so we have a bar here and here and we have a uh, legs we have a legs we have legs here that allow this to be used on like slope because it stands in uh, front of a shop so probably this part here is kind of slope sloped so here we have just like short legs and it stands on a slope like this and this part here is is divided like the roof in like tiling kind of pattern that I don't know if it's real or not probably not probably not in this case but um, if it would be real we, we, we would have like this kind of angled pattern of the boards going like underneath the one that was on previously so the one on top goes uh, so the one below goes under the one oh, you know what I mean probably but from what I can what I can see on the photo it's just like horizontal lines so probably it's like not real uh, in this lantern but I would like to draw it if it would be more well made and again similar thing here Okay, and let's let's uh, make draw a shadow like more or less here. So it looks like it's standing on something. And because the shadow is like to the left, let's let's make one here also and maybe here okay so we have a lantern and this part here is metal the whole thing is wood and the windows inside are like milky white so probably um, they light up and give like really milky orangish glow I would like to imagine and we can do some like wood like texture on these parts here so they look a bit nicer Okay. We can look for another one. Let's see if we have some horizontal ones because we did all the vertical ones. Okay, so I have one here. is a bit interesting it's like a horizontal slab of, of wood which 
I like actually, but um, probably it saw some better days because this part here is like not corroded because it's not metal, but um, what do you call it? We weathered, we weathered. The wood got um, probably rotten and um, fell away. And it has this wood kind of feel to the edges, which I like a lot also. And here it has like weird, what it has some weird parts to it because first this part here, let me get some. help from my um, color pencils they are not Mitsubishi but um, this is what this is Mitsubishi actually this part here is red which is interesting and it has a weird clamps here like this shape here good morning or good evening evening i was trying to say good afternoon and good evening at the same time it's a bit afternoon here and um the whole thing is maybe a bit smaller and a bit to the middle and the whole thing is supported again on on the leg legs that have three cloud pattern so like this and go to the back and here also like one two three and this also goes to the back and this is supported again on these kind of weird plinths that I haven't seen before actually that are of the same of, of the shape that it's needed for the uh, for the ro roof tiles to go like underneath here so we have the, the roof tiles going here this is we weird uh, I haven't seen anything like this before especially the red paint in the on the side is kind of interesting and i don't know what the metal kind of clasps here are for and another thing about this sign is that it has light it has like this lamp here with this attachment and it goes like this To the back okay This edge is a bit like not uneven, probably because of rainfall and water and stuff like this going inside. And it has some really nice like wood texture going like into this pattern here. And there's the name of the shop, but the name of the shop is so faded that that it's really hard to read actually. So it has like this mark here that's in gold letters 
and it has this huge sign here which which says shop and Moto so it's probably like the main store or the oldest part of a store and the same kanjas on, on the top like here and some small letters also here okay Try to make the lamp a bit better. Okay, so it's kind of like this, and this part is interesting because it's red. And this part here is inst interesting because I haven't seen like probably ceramic feet that are meant to fit into the grooves of the roof tiles, which is kind of interesting. Okay, hi everyone! Let's search for something different, another one. Uh, oh yeah, this was, this was kind of interesting, but I have a better photo of this one. Somewhere. Okay, so here we have a really simple one. I'll show you the, the previous ones that uh, I did. So the next one I'm going to do is kind of similar to this one, but uh, it's like the longer version. This is a Karandash 844 mechanical pencil with um, two B leads 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 you told me how to pronounce this in the last video but I'm still not sure it's leads right from Mitsubishi okay so this has a rounded roof with three rows of metal plating I guess that has this um, kind of tiled pattern to it. And an edge here. And there's like a part here that makes this whole thing a bit thicker. And we have the main part of the sign underneath. The only thing is that this sign is again this kind of box type, which means that the sign is actually held up and by this frame. And the sign itself shows signs uh -huh, uh, of being kind of destroyed and old so probably it's like a old sign that was um, restored a bit so it's held by this frame
and it has this longer bar underneath My pronunciation comes from Polish and Japanese as you know Japanese use a lot of in Japan they use a lot of um, words that come from English and they are spelled and spoke in this kind of Japanese fashion using the Japanese um, signs so the katakana uh, so I catch I, I catch myself often speaking English words the Japanese way Okay, and this sign is really actually simple, so I'll try to paint the, uh, draw the kanji, because it has only two kanji in it. One is like this, and the second one is like... This, and they are both wooden, so um, kind of interesting. Um, flat look to them okay and they are they kind of have thickness so I'll try to make like a shadow underneath this part and here Okay, and this part, the whole thing is made of wood, so it has this nice texture and the bars also. And there are two feet more or less here and here that support the whole thing uh, on the roof. So these are made in the like two cloud pattern, so like this two bumps and they lay directly on the tiled roof so uh, I suppose there is like a back side to this um, roof on the top I cannot see it from here and um, there should be like a bar that holds this to the uh, to the building also somewhere there And we have the roof here with the with the gutter part like this. So of course we have this tile here that goes like something like this. This has slip kind of feature and then goes down and is held by this these clips to the bars of the roof. Okay. And this sign drops a shadow here. And that's basically it. It's kind of simple, but I like the I like the rounded roof and the design and that the old sign that survived from some again flames or something is held up in this frame that um, supports it and um, makes it last yet. Okay. Ah, Kana's videos video will have caption.
uh, I already did the captions for that, but she only just have to has to uh, f find some time to um, insert it. But the captions are already made. I made them, uh, so you'll be able to watch it with captions soon. Yay! Uh, by the way, Kana is my wife, and she is uh, also making like videos and and contents and things. Okay. So let's paint another, let's, let's sketch another one. Let's see what we did like until, until now. You have this one, you have stuff like this. Two more, run that one. Uh, we have ones with nice metal struts here more examples we did this one today and we did these today also and here and I also do one more here ish okay let me drink a bit of water Okay, so we have one that is really simple and it's a horizontal one, but um, it's a bit far, so I cannot see the details, but it's um, a bit interesting because it's from the side, so we can actually see how it's attached to the wall. Okay, so let me try to infer from the ones that we did previously how it's actually made so we have this top part and we have this part here which is the side of the sign and um, this bottom part here has two legs coming out of it but um, the thing is that because we can see it from the side we can actually see that the legs are really long like this amount of wood here and I think this is also kind of unique because not uh, many of the signs that I saw so far had legs like this long I don't know why it's needed why they are needed to be so long anyway but okay and there is a bar here that goes like this and it's a quite thick piece of wood like this kind of log almost it goes all the way and ends probably somewhere here and we have a kind of a clamp here that is connected to the wall <sighs> this part is of course wooden and the legs I don't know actually how they end it has like a weird statue kind of thing here I'll have to go here again and make a photo of this it's in Tokyo so maybe I, I'm able to and from what I can see, it looks more like a dog kind of thing, standing on two legs. I don't know. Let's let's make it like this, and holding up this sign. Probably there's one on the other side also, and there's the sign itself that says, I don't know because it's at an angle that I cannot see the kanji really well. And this is held up to the building like this. And this part is kind of in shadow. And this again stands on a roof, but this time it's a kind of metal roof without any tiles. So just like this kind of pattern of shadow no shadow thing 
This is a weird one. Okay. <sighs> Let's search for something different. I also have some different things here uh, for the next sketch series, but now I want to focus on the on signs and signage and stuff like this. So I have I did this one. Okay, so let's let's do this one. Uh, more of us, more than a sign. It's like a gate, but I want to sketch it and see where we go. Okay, I cannot see the side of it so well, so I'll just try to think what what comes here when we come to this place but whatever um, first it has a roof which looks like this okay and it has the metal um, layers like this and here is like a bump that probably goes over a wooden part that we cannot see and this is whole metal uh, parts so this is all like metal roofing made of uh, copper that already is green and we have a bar here that supports this and two side bars like this and few a bit shorter ones about here and this all goes of course like underneath the roof so I'm guessing that this part looks more or less like this and it has like the back part which is more or less like this and this is mirrored on the other side okay so if we see this should have the back like this and uh, probably we have a bar here and a bar here and a bar here which go all of them go like through the whole thing And we have the smaller bars visible here. So probably something like this. Okay, and there are two vertical bars that go here and the other one of course on the other side. So here and like this. And this one has a hole here. I don't know why, but it has. So I'll I'll guess that this one also has. And there's a horizontal bar here. So I'll just fill it like this. There's something here. Like this and it's connected here <sighs> okay and we have a sign inside that starts I don't know why but from here and goes like this which is a nice piece of wood that is not made straight but is this kind of natural shape of cut wood 
and there's the sign here in the middle and the big some bigger letters here and again some smaller letters here and let's make it kind of wood pattern so we know okay and this goes all the way down to the ground I guess it has some kind of protection from just rotting down in the in the ground like this Okay, and it has some shadows ah, and also this part in the middle I don't know why because probably it's attached to the sides also it has some metal bolty kind of things and then piece of rope that holds this thing I really hope that this thing is also like held up here on the sides but if it's only like wired to the top it probably go wild on in the wind and because it's really heavy it is a solid piece of wood it would probably just collapse the whole thing okay and this roof part is part is me not me metal 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 okay and um, let's see something more okay this one is interesting Do I have a better photo of this? Yes, okay. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask while I'm sketching. Okay, let's do another one. This, is, this one is horizontal. I'm zoom in a bit. And we have... It's kind of interesting because it has some a thing that I don't know why this thing is there but let's see okay so this is a simple like slab of This shape more or less and this is interesting because this is made of stone so it's like this white stone with black letters and it has two legs like usual yeah like usual that have like this two cloud pattern this time so something like this but with a um, line in the middle so I guess it's a metal part from a mold 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 this 
should be a bit longer, I guess. Here ish, and it's kind of thick. And what's fancy about this is that we have a lamp here, a lamp or a, lan a lantern, probably is more. Because it looks something like this. And because this is at an angle and the lamp is not, it has a different perspective than this bottom part. Okay, and it's held up with this bar here, which goes to the back, <laughs> and it has like this part here. Looks more or less like this. It's made of this dark metal. Okay, so this in in this. In this configuration, it's not so... Interesting, but um, it has black letters. So let's just mark that they are there. Okay, and it's made of stone with a lot of these like after rain marks on it but the weirdest part is that it has a bar just a slab of stone like this like behind it which is also set on these feet things that just sits there and does nothing. I don't know, maybe it's the like first, um, like uh, after the first store was destroyed by the earthquake or whatever. And um, it's just this kind of slab of stone is what's left from it. So they used it uh, on the storefront and displayed it like, um, like a sculpture almost. So it just sits there and drops this shadow and it's really thick and looks like almost like a ton of or more of, of just rock. And it's kind of big actually, it goes there. I guess I'll save this live stream, yes. Um, you can see the previous part on my uh, on my channel. And this whole thing sits on the on the roof, of course, which is like this uh, angle. And there are win windows here, like at this angle. So yeah, I'm guessing that this bar of stone that's like in, like behind the design is a thing that they got from, um, 
their previous store as it collapsed or whatever from uh, some calamity but uh, probably things like this I don't know any other reasons why they they would do a bar just put a bar of, of, of rock on, on top of the roof maybe to hold it down okay next one and this one I actually really want to sketch because it's nice okay so this is a vertical one and it looks like the a box like this and is supported here by a wooden block and it rests on a roof of course with this um, angle of tiles so you know more or less uh, how it's positioned and it has the most interesting roof Arigato. so we have the front tile I'll zoom a bit because it's really nice you have the front tile here and it goes like here to the back and it's this kind of shape and then again it's like a front tile so the like the gorgeous ones with this shape which is really nice i'm sorry but when i'm speaking when i'm drawing my um vocabulary is really limited i have a question does perspective, does perspective come naturally or do you practice um, I practice but it comes naturally when you practice so it's um, this kind of thing that you cannot just uh, sit and start suddenly drawing things in perspective uh, but it comes to you naturally when you practice a lot and you are kind of conscious okay my camera died I will replace the battery wait a second Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Let's see. Okay. Um Yeah, it's just um, the basic thing is to learn to draw boxes like this and once you have a box that is um, in perspective you can start adding details to your liking and when you learn how to um, simplify difficult shapes into boxes that you can just draw in perspective without any reference then it gets easier and easier over time to skip the box um, sketch and then just go straight to the thing that you want to draw but basically um, the ability of, of um, drawing simple shapes in perspective makes you good at painting or drawing anything in perspective basically so when someone tells you to just practice on difficult um, like cities or t buildings or something it's not really good uh, but if you can just draw uh, simple basic shapes like boxes or how do you call these um, like pipes or like shapes like this in in perspective you can start joining them together and and doing more and more difficult shapes and most of things can be represented by this kind of um, basic shapes that you can then um, make more and more difficult as you go a torus 
Yeah, I will save it. I I, I will put it in my um uh, in my channel. You can already see the previous part of this stream there also. Okay, so we have this roof that is not on fire but is beautifully made of tiles. So this is a miniature version of a full-scale tiled roof with all the parts here. So we have the front tiles here and here on the edges and we have the main tiles with the round thing and we have the underneath with is which is supported on these two bars here and um, the roof is of two tile length so it has two tiles here lengthwise and it's really nice the, the, it doesn't have the ending here because it goes underneath the roof of the building on which the sound sign is on so and this is again with it this has this these two wooden parts that stick out in front and a wooden frame like a box and this has this um, sign inside which has this logo here and some kanji that I cannot read so I'll just mark them here and again the same logo here with the letter T in the wheel which is nice and some kanji here the name of the store and some kanji here also and this part because it's underneath the roof is in shadow like this and to prevent this whole thing which is probably quite heavy from toppling over it has like three spaces here for the roof tiles which go like here and it also has a a strut here a metal strut which goes like until the like to the building uh, to help to support it how do i think about proportion when when i draw um you can start from a thing that you more or less know the proportions of so for example here i started with the box of the sign because I know how the proportions are the, the top to side so this kind of I know like it should be like this long and about this because I can see it but um, if you cannot see something and just you're working from memory or just making stuff up you can start from a thing that you know what size it should be so for example a vending machine or a, a desk or whatever that should give you like the starting point from for proportions or you know that this room has to be like three meters per like 10 meters more or less so you know um, the desk is like 70 centimeters or something so you can start like building from from there The only thing that's really hard about perspective is that ability to draw things uh, in good size even if they are in perspective. So the co most common mistake is to drawing like a building in perspective and making doors like this. But if you would like, if you would look like this, 
the doors would be like really wide probably like this so most of the times in perspective like this the doors are almost not visible so details like this are hard in drawing in perspective but uh, once you have some practice and you do some sketches and you do some sketches from photos you okay so in this perspective we should not be able to see this part or th that part okay i like this sign a lot actually um i guess it's backlit uh, when it's evening and i would like to see it backlit in in the evening it looks really nice Okay, and no memos here, I guess, because this part is whole wooden and the, the top part is just tiles like on the roof, so it goes like here and there's the end of the roof and also the end of the roof is more or less like here. I'll zoom out a bit so you can see the whole thing. Okay. Let's, let's look for something more. Okay, this one is interesting, a new thing, but uh, let's sketch it. So a really simple one here. At an angle, of course, to the roof and to the street below. And this time we have two lamps in the corners because it's like a new thing, I guess. Just supported on this kind of swivel base type thing. And it has two legs, but the legs are not carved, so it just rests on the legs like this. And the leg goes like here. So we have another one about here, I guess. And it has a frame and thickness like this. So this part here is thicker. Okay, and it has golden like fragments here in the in the corners which are kind of covered by the lamps in the in the corners so i don't know if i it if it was a wise decision and because it's kind of small we can see how it's supported on the on the wall because it has two struts one here so that goes all the way to the wall like a metal bar and one also in the back which goes like about here I guess and the roof ends here I don't draw a lot in my sketchbook actually, um, I get a lot of requests from you um, to show you my sketchbook and do like a sketchbook tour, tour. but um, I actually am not a good sketchbook art artist, I don't do mo much sketching. This is also why I started doing this um, uh, live broadcast because it kind of makes me do it. Um, I should sketch more to learn more. Uh, about the things that I want to draw and do more preparation sketches but um, when I when I try to do a project like a comic or something then I do sketches and concept arts but uh, or for animation for example but when I just do like things for my next book or something I prepare mostly like directly for this picture I do some like rough I do some um, color rough for example but I don't do like um, just random sketching when I um, f just have some time and feel like it. 
I should do more. So this stands on the, on a roof that's tiled like this, so that the shadow is kind of wonky, like like that. So it's something simple like this. Okay. I'm looking for reference. I, I'm looking at reference pictures because this is just like a sketching session in which I explore or the all the kinds of Japanese signs and and stuff like banners and shop si shop signs like this. And I use some reference that I found on the internet just randomly, um, looking at Pinterest and whatever. And I have some photos. Um, that I had, uh, I took by myself in Kawagoe and other places in Japan that um, have like old style Japanese buildings. Okay, let's do a next one. And this one is really interesting. Um, it's not so difficult. It's shaped like this. And it has a thicker part here. And it has this pattern. So I guess it's a place that sells like woodworking tools. And it has a sign. Yeah, it has some letters, like three letters here and huge two letters here and here and this sign is kind of suspended on bars like this and I, I don't like this part because this is just like a metal frame they should make it like wooden or or just more interesting a bit At least this part seems to be made of wood. Okay, this one was fast. Let's see if we have something more. Ah, this one, yes, I want to do this one. I had a better photo of, of this one. Let me look for it. Fortunately, a lot of the shops in Kawagoe put some um, thought to it 
and um, did some really interesting things with their signage and some of them are really like traditional some of them are more modern but kind of looking traditional so I'm really happy about that this one is interesting because it's really sim it's made of really simple materials it has like a bamboo part on top which is held to the rest with just pieces of string something like this I think Hey, Jobo. And there is like a wooden part here. And this this um, roof tile kind of part here also is, I guess, made of wood. And we have the same roof kind of thing on the other side. And the rest of the sign is supported on these two beams, one and two here. About there's one that goes between these two in the front and in the back, and then there's a box uh, made of this wider piece of wood in front, like this. It's kind of long actually, and there's a bar here, and again a long wide piece of wood in the back, something like this, and it's it has some thickness, and there's a bar like here. And this is what actually has the sign in it. So we have one that's here and it has some letters. And this is the main one that has the main letters and the main letters are kind of three dimensional. I, I'll try to kind of draw them at least so we can have a bit of the shadow that they give because they are nice and 3D. I will sketch characters when I'm doing something with characters. I don't know when, but um, probably after I finish my uh, Tokyo at Night book, I would like to do something with characters. So probably then I'll be sketching characters, but. When I sketch characters more, more, most of the time this is just for my next project so I don't want to spoil stuff for you. That's why I don't post any um, videos in which I sketch my characters that I then use somewhere. Maybe I'll do some like random characters but as I said I don't do so much like random sketching. Um, this is one exercise to do more. Okay, and let's let's draw some letters here. When I finish my Tokyo at Night book, I want to do some exercises in hands and also in just random characters. So maybe then I will I have some um, character sketching live streams, but I'm not so good at doing characters. So um, it's kind of different than just sketching buildings because buildings like and elements like this one, I can sketch. I know that I can do. 
and here I'm just learning um, adding things to my kind of visual vo vocabulary rather than just learning how to do um, characters from from scratch okay so this is nice and it's held up uh, in the air by a bar here and I'm guessing also one here and there's also a metal strut that goes from the side of the sign to the wall on the other side from like like here and here so it doesn't wobble in the wind when there's like high wind I like this sign a lot also uh, <coughs> of you. I like oh, that yeah. the letters are golden and I like that the, the, the roof is really simple and made just like of bamboo and uh, wooden tiles for the for the roofing is this kind of natural natural cool than opposite to um, signs like this with all kinds of tiles that probably costed a lot of money to uh, manufacture for this sign only so Coffee! Kanarigata! Okay. <sighs> and I'll memorize some things about this one. Like gold letters 3D. So they are like this kind of th 3D thickness, about like three centimeters thick. So really thick letters. Okay, um, let's let's see if we have something more. But um, I'm already doing this about two hours, so I think we will be quitting soon. Yay! Um, oh yeah, there, there was the one that I wanted to do with the with the turnip. It had a turnip in it, so I wanted to do the turnip one also. Oh yeah, it's here. Okay, let's do a turnip turnip sign. And this is actually two signs because this shop had like the standard horizontal one and a sign with the turnip in it so so here we have the standard part <laughs> like this and it has like these small details here and it's just like a wooden straight sign with a bit of legs here and here but the bottom part is a bit wavy so they decided to uh, keep the original shape of the wood slab pro probably and it has some letters here and here <sighs> okay and this part is at an angle so I'm again guessing that this is like the original shape of the wood and the legs are really simple because they are like 
just this kind of simple pieces of wood uh. I have to say that this paper is really nice I tried to use it with my um, fountain pen but uh, in terms of writing with or drawing with the fountain pen I like the standard MD paper more than the cotton one this one is supposed to be better and give more feel of drawing and a bit of more tech a bit more of texture so I think it's better for like pencil sketching but I didn't like it for um, uh, fountain pen so much but it's really nice for for uh, sketching okay and so here's the main part that I wanted to do here in this one because it is really cute so again we have a box like this and it has the back And it has legs in front longer. Something like this. And it inside it has a, a turnip, I guess with leaves like this and like this and this is all made of wood just cut and painted so it's kind of this 3d thick piece of wood I don't know how it's hang up in inside of here. It probably hold from ah, then we'll break it. And uh, it has thicker sides, of course. like this and the bottom part is of course like this so we have the legs here in front and they are supported on an angle with a piece of I get I'm guessing concrete like substance to the roof and also here because it's at an angle and also there is like a st strut holding this thing to the roof like in two places uh, to the building in two places because the building is like here the roof ends like here and it's an, at an angle like this and we have a small roof thing on top of this like this kind of thing one two three bars coming out from the roof here and it has like a top thing with three no two bars here and this part here in the middle is of course in shadow like like this
so it looks more or less like this a floating turnip inside of a signed sign I'm guessing it's held up with some wires or something and also there's like a nice accent here and here because there are small like actually turnips in the like, in the um, corners here so we know that it's a shop that has something to do with turnips I don't know what they sell but the design is really cute okay so that's it I think uh, I have to answer some phones that are ringing but let's go um, once through the whole thing that um, we paint we draw today this is wooden and this is white and green I mean the, the turnip part okay um, let's go through the through today's um, part of the uh, of the sketching we did I think for and a half pages so this is the first one the hair salon with blue and red um, bars on the poles on both sides of the sign here's one without the uh, how do you call it mm, paper lantern that goes in between here's one with a green bean thing standing sign of a lantern kind of type one that had like red um, side and the lamp one that had again the frame kind of pattern and the old sign in the middle one that had like two figurines in on both sides a standing sign a vertical one of like box type with the sign inside uh, one with a, that was made of stone with a stone slab I don't know what is this um, a simple one modern one some fancy ones for uh, fancy things like the um, woodworking tools and some sweets and um, here we have one with a flying turnip inside so this one is my favorite probably okay thank you for joining me in the stream again I was drawing this in the MD paper uh, cotton sketchbook uh, which is nice and has, has a lot of pages still to fill with uh, pencil sketching and this is like the MD cotton uh, one and I was drawing with a Karan Dash uh, 844 pencil uh, with 2B LEDs inside so and this is the uh, electric eraser that I was using all the time okay more more about my my tools is on my website in the frequently asked questions section so you can read about about them more there and I will probably leave this stream on my YouTube account so you can review it later. Okay, thank you for joining me today and I will see you in my next video. You can always comment and share and subscribe and you can also, always also support me on Patreon which helps a lot. I will scan this, uh, these sketches and make a PDF out of them and upload it to my Patreon for my uh, Patreon supporters so you will be able to see these sketches in full quality if you are supporting me there okay thank you and I'll see you in the next one